All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Cougar Mountain Software webinar for June 27th. My name is Brian Bredauer, and today's topic is QuickBooks versus Denali for nonprofits. This webinar will be presented by none other than Cougar Mountain Software's very own Jeremy Beistlein. He's our systems trainer and accountant, and he's been with us for a number of years. He also provides over-the-phone training or training at your facility by appointment. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Jeremy. All right. Thank you, Brian. Okay. It's good to be here again doing another webinar here for Cougar Mountain. Uh, like with the other webinars, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, go ahead and type your question in the question box and we'll get to those at the end of the webinar. Uh, you can go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question, so I'll see those and then we'll answer those questions at the end. Okay, so today we're going to be talking and comparing QuickBooks and Denali's nonprofit accounting systems. So uh, QuickBooks Denali Premier for nonprofit, or I'm sorry, let's <laughs> try that again. QuickBooks Premier for nonprofit versus Denali Fund Accounting. Uh, so typically what you're looking for in an accounting system, uh, especially in the nonprofit world, is accounts, uh, an accounting system that gives you nonprofit functionality. Uh, such as fund tracking, fund accountability, donation and grant tracking, uh, fund specific functionality such as due to, do from processing and so forth. Uh, so we're going to compare the, the differences of what you get in Denali Fund and talk a little bit about how you can have a lot of advantages over the QuickBooks system. And the number one thing that we focus on, especially in the nonprofit industry, is generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, yeah, Jeremy, could you give us a few examples of how Denali adheres to GAAP accounting principles? All right, great question, Brian. Uh, basically, uh, the, the GAAP accounting systems that are implemented in Denali are specific to the security controls. Uh, for sure, you want to make sure that your Denali system your accounting system allows you to process transactions. I switched over to the Denali screens here for it so you can see. One of the main security controls that we offer is entering transactions in a batch system. Uh, now in QuickBooks, you go into enter bills and you hear a little sound and the bill is entered and posted and it's done. However, at any point you can retrieve that transaction, you can make changes to those transactions. Uh, if something doesn't look right, you can just open the transaction and change it. And that might seem pretty easy and convenient, but it's not secure at all. Whereas in Denali, when you enter a transaction, you enter your transaction in, you save the transaction, and what that does is it saves it in a temporary batch or session file. At the end of your session, you verify your work, and then you post the transactions that you have entered for that session. And as per GAAP accounting, that's a lot more secure because once the transactions are posted, they are there to stay. They cannot be changed. So once you post those transactions, it locks them in and your financial records are updated at that point in real time. And those records are there to stay. Okay, Jeremy, if you can't change anything after it's been posted, how would you fix a mistake? Yep, that's a good question. That's a common question we get all the time, especially from previous QuickBooks users. Uh, in the history, you bring up your financial records in QuickBooks and you say, oh, that doesn't look right. Let's go ahead and fix that. They open the transaction, make the change, and it's done. But there's no record of that. There's, where's the security? So in Denali, once you post those transactions, they're there to stay. So if you find a mistake afterwards, it's a matter of making an adjustment to what's there which is a new transaction that you will also post, and then you have a complete, full audit trail history of everything that you have done in your accounting records. So you can see those records in the audit trail, and there is no question of what's done. You see the original transaction, and you see any adjustments that were made, plus any corrections on top of that. And you get the complete detail. The audit trail, as per GAAP accounting, also has sequential reference numbering so that you can keep track of when the transaction posted, in case the dates were changed. Also, it keeps track of the user that entered and posted that transaction, along with the transaction information as needed. 
Uh, so that's just one of the many features that Denali offers to comply with generally accepted accounting principles that you'll find in, in a good accounting system. And nowhere is it more important than in the nonprofit sector that the gap accounting functionality is there. One of the other features with Denali fund accounting is with the nonprofit sector, you'll have the options to run what's called FASB reports. FASB reports are specialized financial statements that are designed for fund accounting and nonprofit accounting specifically. So when you run those reports, you get the generic FASB options for the statement of activities. Statement of activities is also known as the revenue and expense report, but it's done in what's called the FASB format, as you can see here where the accounts and numbers and activities are grouped together by categories. So these are the top tier categories found in the FASB format on the statement of activities. You also have the statement of financial position, which is also known as the balance sheet. So if we run that through the whole year, we see the totals for the statement of financial condition or the statement of financial position. Some reports are known as, or labeled as financial condition. So with Denali's fund accounting, you have the fund specific reporting options that are available to you that you might not have in other accounting systems, which allows you to run your reports based on the Financial Accounting Standards Board or the FASB options that you have there. Tracking and reporting tools is also very important in setting up a good accounting system. Um, specifically in Denali, you've got options to run reports for specific funds, for programs, right down to different departments as needed, uh, just by simply setting up your filtering options that you have set up in the system here. So I can manually put in a filter to run a report and it gives me all the information I need for all of my accounts in my O1 department or program, so to speak. This is my revenue and expense report filtered out by, let me uncheck this so that we can get the example there, filtered out by the O1 program or whatever I label that particular part of my chart of accounts setup. That's just one example. I can run reports separate by fund as well. And that way I don't uh, have to show everything. I just want to see what's in the administration fund in this example here, as you can see there. Some of the reporting options you have in Denali Fund Accounting are far superior to a lot of other uh, accounting systems with QuickBooks. You have generic reports that are in the system. With Denali, you've got several options that you can do that are built right into the program so that you can run those reports as needed. And again, I can run a report here that I've set up for what I call an outreach program. That's just something I labeled myself in the program, and it puts the label on my report for me and shows me only the information associated to that program. Some of the other options you have in fund accounting in Denali is that you can generate and customize your own reporting. Um, it's very important that you keep track of end of year donation statements in a nonprofit accounting system. QuickBooks does provide an end of year donation statement, but it's pretty much generic and what you see is what you get. With Denali, you can customize that statement along with any other report using the Crystal Reports Writer program. One of the features that Denali does have over QuickBooks is using the Crystal Reports program, you have the customization options because the system is not locked down like QuickBooks is quite so much. Uh, with Denali, you have direct access to the Denali databases needed to generate the information on the reports that you need. And the end of year statements is only one example of that. You have any other reports that are in the system that you can customize using Crystal Reports. Denali is also scalab scalable to grow with your organization. 
Um, with QuickBooks, it's limited to some extent with Denali. There's virtually no limit that you can do. You can set up your different funds as needed for your organization, and you can have unlimited funds as needed. In my system, I've only got four, but there's no limit to that. You can set up your chart of accounts numbering system to expand as needed. My system, I have a simple 10-digit 10 10 digit account number broken up in three parts, the account number itself, the program, or the fund. Uh, but you can expand that to be as big as you need, up to six parts, and up to 50 digits total on the account numbering structure as needed, just however you need to set it up. So this right here is a very complex account numbering structure, as you can see there, but that is certainly not a problem in, fund, in Denali's fund accounting system. You can keep it as simple as needed or get as complex as needed for the various programs that you run. And again, because we do not lock down our database, the system allows you to easily transfer the data that's generated in the Denali program to Microsoft Excel for expense tracking, for budgeting, or for whatever purpose you need to get that information out. Uh, Excel is only one of the many programs you can transfer. You can set up direct data links with other database programs as well as needed. Uh, we also have a great budgeting system in Denali, which I believe QuickBooks is lacking on. Uh, with Denali, you can set up budgets as simple or as complex as you need based on the chart of account structure. You can set up a separate budget for each accounting period or do a total budget for the year. And in doing so, you can generate those budget reports and import and export the budgets easily to Microsoft Excel. The import-export is very nice because a lot of people like to use Excel and the formulas in Excel to create their budgets. So you can set up the budget in the Excel spreadsheet and import that directly into Denali. And then that lets you run your budget reports as needed. Several options for running the budget reports that are available to you. Uh, you can have a simple budget report or a complex budget report as needed. running your budgets. The simple report shows us the current actual expenditures and revenues for the current period, the year-to-date totals, and the budget amounts, and we get the difference there. And these numbers right here, which calculate the variance and the variance between the actuals and the budgets, are brought in through the budgets that you bring in, either through the import or through the direct entry system that is set up for you in Denali. Okay, moving on here. And of course, with all of the data that's coming in, Denali has built in tools to run charts and graphs showing you your financial state as well. Uh, or you can use certain programs like Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Access to generate your own tools based on the data that Denali has generated. Uh, the Denali system does have a built-in system for that known as the dashboard that pops up the information right on your screen to give you a snapshot view of what you're looking for at any time. Okay, so what are some other differences that Denali and QuickBooks uh, are different? What are some other differences that Denali has over QuickBooks? Uh, QuickBooks is limited to 25 users. Denali, there is no user limitation. So when you're setting up your users in Denali, you can set up as many users as you need to in the system. Now, my little system here, I've only got three, but I can set up as many different users as I need. Uh, and then your, whatever licensing you have with Denali allows you to have as many concurrent users on the system as you need as well, based on licensing. But you can set up as many users as you want, even if you're only licensed for one. Uh, that just means you can only have one user in the system at that time. But if you're licensed for more, you can have as many as you need. Also, as per GAP accounting, you can set up the controls for what the users are allowed to do or what they're not allowed to do. And in our earlier example, you can set up a user to enter the bills in the batch, run the edit report to verify that the work that was done is correct, However, you may have a supervisor do the posting. That way, the user does all the work, 
and the one in charge is just going to review their work and post it at the end of the day to make sure that it is posted correctly. Another principle in gap accounting that allows you to keep full control over what you're allowed to do or what the users are allowed to do as well. All right, some of the other differences with Denali, you have secure processing of all of your electronic payments included, such as credit and debit card processing, electronic benefit transfers, EFTs, rewards and gift cards, and check processing. If you set up Denali's point of sale or sales system, you can directly integrate credit card processing into Denali as well. And the credit card processing we use is fully PCI compliant for the new requirements with the chip embedded cards. Uh, POS check conversion is included with Denali's system as well. Uh, if you have the Denali payroll system, we use the direct deposit option available. But what we do is we use the standardized NACHA format for direct deposit, which means that we don't have to charge you an extra fee for every direct deposit you do. That's just done directly through your bank. Some of the other systems like QuickBooks, they require you to subscribe to a monthly service fee for that feature, and they also charge a per deposit fee as well. Uh, you won't find that with Denali. Same with receipts and payables. You can run standardized ACH direct electronic transfers for vendor payments or customer payments coming into your organization, which could also be used for donations uh, for donors in a nonprofit organization. Uh, we did talk a little bit about the audit trail. It's very important to have a secure audit trail that shows all information all the transactions that are posted, including any corrections or changes that were made. And in Denali's audit trail, we also have the option to drill down to the transaction level itself. So if I go up here and run the audit trail report, and I run that for, let's run it for the year, so we can see everything there. The system brings up uh, account totals. And then you can drill down to period totals, to a listing of the transactions, right down to the actual transaction itself, which gives you some great options. Let me run it for my revenue and expense accounts. There we go. All right. So as you can see, you can narrow down what you're looking for. Huh. And my revenue and expense accounts has no information. You can drill down to what you are looking for exactly. It's because they have zero balances at this point. So there is no information there. Okay. All right. Let's try that again. You have to bear with me here, folks. <laughs> drill down from period one to, let's go all the way out to... 26, so we can get some information on there. There it is. Now we're seeing some information here. And you can scroll through the different accounts that are there that are available for you. Um, you can double click on any account and it brings up the information that you need. And if I double click on, for example, one of my revenue accounts here, this brings up a list of all the transactions in the revenue account. And I can double click one more time to actually get the transaction itself right on the screen. So this is also a feature you see in the QuickBooks ledgers where you can double click and drill down right to the transaction itself. So all the information is there. But the difference is, is because we're gap accounting, I cannot change this information here. I have to enter adjustments to correct anything which is going to list separately in my audit trail. Uh, one of the great security features that you have in the Denali Fund Accounting System. Okay. So it's very important that you have a secure GAP accounting compliant system that tracks everything as needed here. We talked about the posting reference numbers, uh, how they are in a sequential numbering system. That's important because you may have users that enter a transaction on a different date, but the sequence will still be in line with the other transactions on the audit trail, so you can see that. 
fund accounting scalability is very important, unlimited funds, delineations and bandwidth to handle as many accounts at a large scale, as large as a scale as required. Restricted funds, unrestricted funds, temporary restricted funds, those are all options you get with Denali's fund accounting. Unique fund entry, specific fund functionality, functionality. You can also have separate fiscal calendars, fiscal years for the different funds as needed, separate charts of accounts as needed for the funds. Uh, and the specific fund balancing entries, such as the automatic due to do from processing. Those are all features you get with fund accounting in Denali that you might not find in the other systems. Uh, using filters to give special reports, we kind of covered that a little bit, to show the different reports for different programs or segments of your organization. You can customize your own income statements for different parts of your program or different staff members as needed. You can do detailed income statements as opposed to rolled up income statement totals for the board of directors. Uh, the Denali system is done in a modular based system that allows you to build on that as needed. So as you can see here in Denali, you have several different options, accounts payable, accounts receivable, general ledger. You even have options for sales. You have options for inventory. Sales is loading up here in just a sec. That's really handy for organizations that might have a gift shop or, you know, the nonprofit where they have a thrift store and they're raising uh, funds through sales in their thrift store. All of that can be included in your Denali package, inventory tracking, purchase order tracking. But you only have to get the, you're not required to buy the whole package. Like in QuickBooks, you get the QuickBooks Premier for nonprofit you get an entire package. With Denali, you can pick and choose what you need. You might not need the point of sale system. You might not need inventory. So you don't have to get those if need, unless you need them. And all of the modules are fully integrated, so they talk to each other. Whenever I do something in accounts receivable, it automatically hits the general ledger, of course. Any deposits coming in through donations or customers through accounts receivable will automatically post to the bank rec for the bank reconciliation. General ledger accounts can be set up as detailed as needed. Uh, it's a simple account setup or it can be as complex as you need for your organization. With the account numbering structure and the different restriction types and report groups that you can assign to each individual account as needed. Uh, so Denali and QuickBooks have some similarities in uh, the the customer service and support. QuickBooks and Denali both provide pricing information, deployment information, and a feature set. One thing that uh, Denali Fund excels in is we do our own in-house support, whereas we provide support directly here. All of the support representatives you work with are working right here in the United States, here at the Denali headquarters. Uh, we also provide training to our clients directly as well. So you, we don't outsource these services to other companies. Um, matter of fact, I'm actually one of the trainers. So if you sign up for any of the training services, you would probably be working directly with me or one of our other in-house trainers that we have. So Denali Fund Accounting, the advantages you have is scalability, control restricted funds, gives you uh, restrictions, unrestrictions, temporary restricted or due to do from processing. You can set up multiple fiscal calendars, a separate calendar for each fund as needed in your organization. Your report options are unlimited using crystal customer reporting. Denali is fully secure with GAAP accounting compliance and we provide our own in-house support and training for all of our clients. Uh, the support and training can be done uh, through phone, remote, uh, the training, we also provide training conferences and classes throughout the country, and also we send trainers right out to your business as needed, and they come right from here, from our headquarters here. Okay, so any of you who are interested in switching to Denali, um, if you currently are using QuickBooks, We've got a new feature that we just added as well where you can import your basic information from your QuickBooks database into Denali. We actually have that option now 
uh, when you set up a new organization in Denali, or if you're using our old legacy software, or now we've added the import from QuickBooks option. All right, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and jump to any questions. Uh, is, if anyone has any questions, make sure they're typed into the Q&A section on the webinar tool, and we'll go ahead and answer your questions for you. Okay, so there is a good point that just came up. Um, one thing that I did say in the webinar is that uh, Denali doesn't lock down the Denali database, makes it more accessible. Uh, I did want to clarify that. We, our database is very secure. It is locked down. But what I mean by that is it's not so proprietary like QuickBooks, which means you have access to retrieve information according to your settings and your security that you set up in order to generate your own custom reports and financial records as needed. So it is a very secure database, um, but it's not a proprietary system that locks you out as the user. So if you need to uh, access information, you can query the database tables as needed using Crystal Reports or other database applications. All right, we do have a, uh, a question from Susan on the line here. Uh, she says, using the Im import from QuickBooks, can I still change the account number structure? You know, that is a really good question, Susan. Um, Denali does allow you to change that account number structure as needed up until you're ready to what we call activate the general ledger. And that would happen after your import. So yes, you can still change that account structure. And one thing you can do even after activating and even if you've already uh, started using Denali and have transactions, you can always build or add to the account number structure. As you can see here, I've got uh, several years history in my little company file. Not a whole lot per month, but there's a little bit there. Um, I've got my 10-digit account number structure. If I need to change that, I can build on that. I can increase that, add another segment. I can add however many digits I need to to that segment, or I can even add digits to existing segments. Maybe I need to add uh, my two-digit program segment. I might need to make that three digits. So that is definitely an option you can do in the Denali system. And you can increase or build on that as needed at any point. So great question, yes. Uh, your question was, how can I track events? Uh, good question. Uh, in Denali, there's several options for doing that. You can do that on the general ledger level through an account segment or maybe assign a specific fund to track events in that fund. You can do that through the other modules as well, through the accounts receivable and payable setup, just by assigning categories as needed. Uh, Denali has several different options to do that for you. Uh, Denali will track the accounting for those events. If you need further tracking, there may be additional software applications you would need to look into for that. It looks like that uh, that pretty much wraps it up. So thank you all for coming here, and I'm going to turn it back over to Brian to wrap it up for us. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. Please look for follow-up communications. Access to this webinar, as well as many other webinars, can be found by visiting our website at cougarmountain.com. That's www.cougarmtn.com. I also wanted to mention that Cougar Mountain Software has just partnered with Max Giving and can now help provide nonprofit organizations with more than just their fund accounting solution. Max Giving, Max Giving offers a variety of special event and online fundraising solutions catering exclusively to the nonprofit industry. They provide a consultative approach to fundraising with the right solution for every organization. Learn more about them online at their website, www.maxgiving.com. And with that, our presentation has reached its conclusion. Have a good day, and we'll see you next time.